pre test preparation along with ashiva khan uh, she is a trainee associate at law seco so i welcome you both for this session and without wasting any further time i would like you to uh, start with the session so hi guys uh, welcome back to another webinar where we are going to discuss the details of an other really high you know highly coveted exam in the financial sector that is the rbi grade b legal exam now guys even before we begin with the discussion for today i would like to clarify that the notification for this year is not out yet right so our entire analysis of the syllabus or you know the eligibility criteria pattern and everything are have is heavily dependent upon the previous years uh, papers as well as notifications now the structure that we are going to follow in this webinar is going to be you know similar to the one that we had followed in the sebi grade a legal exam that was conducted last week so i would be walking you through you know the different eligibility requirements and syllabus and everything and besides while we are actually discussing the details of the rbi grade b legal exam i would also be comparing it with our sebi grade a legal exam now if you ask me why the reason is very simple because both these exams are actually related to different segments of the financial market and they are more or less similar in a lot of ways obviously there are a few differences as well but uh, it's only when they are actually compared that you can actually be you know like in a position to make a well informed decision when it comes to you uh, towards you know when you have to decide as to which exam should you actually sit for so with this in mind let's just begin anu can you please allow me to share my screen yes uh, now you can share your screen okay okay so is it visible yes okay so guys as you can see uh here like i have just you know given you a brief overview of the markets uh, of the two segments into which the financial market is also divided into right so if you talk about the indian financial market it is basically you know primarily bifurcated into the capital market as well as the money market now the first question that should actually come to your mind should be like why should one even go to capital market or when should a person be required to go towards the money market so the re the you know very simple funda over here would be that if you if a person wants to invest for a longer duration by longer duration i mean a period of more than one year then in those cases they would actually be availing uh, or you know going to the capital market if they want uh, the, to invest for a period of more than one year but if they want short term returns if they want to invest for a period less than one year then the market that they would be required to go to would be the money market now next we come to the regulators so when we talk about capital market over here the regulator of the capital market is our securities and exchange board of india so this uh, this organization is primarily responsible for the regulation of the capital market of our country but uh when we come to the money market the regulator of money market would be our rbi right so our so reserve bank of india is primarily responsible for the regulation of the money market of our country now see as you can see bo because both these markets are actually the segments of the financial market itself so both these regulators actually report to the same authority which is the ministry of finance so this like you know it's important for you to know the kind of organization or the segment in which you would be working which is why i thought it's important if we could actually give you a brief idea with regard to the different markets as well as their regulators next we come to the exam so obviously like you know if you want to be a part of the organization of sebi the exam that you would be required to appear for would be the sebi grade a legal exam i'm not going into much detail over here this is just for you know comparison purposes so for rbi if you want to be a part of the organization of rbi the exam that you would be appearing for would be the rbi grade b legal exam now as you can see there is a difference in the grades when you appear for sebi it's grade a when you appear for rbi it's grade b so as you can see there is a difference in the grades to which you would be appointed so in a similar manner because of this very reason the requirements would also be different like because see the position that you would be appointed to when you come to sebi the position is that of an assistant manager when you appear for the grade a legal exam but when you appear when you appear for the rbi grade b legal exam when you clear the same 
the position that you would be appointed to would be that of a manager so as you can see guys if you are looking at the rbi grade b exam you see that you are actually one step up the uh, up the ladder or you can say you are one step up in the organization because you won't start as an assistant manager you will straight away be starting from the position of a manager in the organization of rbi so because your you know like your uh, position is increasing in the organization because your responsibilities would be a bit more complicated or you can say a bit more advanced as compared to that of an assistant manager that is why the uh, the you can say that the age limits or the requirements that are needed to be eligible for the exam would be a bit more advanced when you compare with them with sebi so if you see here like when we were uh, remember when we were talking about uh, the age limit in sebi the age limit was uh, not more, like a person should not be more than 30 years when it comes to uh, the, the eligibility criteria with regard to age uh, for the sebi grade a legal exam but when you talk about the rbi the age limit here is that a person should not be more than 32 years of age now obviously there are some relaxations that we'll be discussing in the next box itself but for now just know that if you want to be eligible for the position of rbi grade b legal exam you should not be more than 32 years of age next we move on to the educational qualification the most important one when it comes to the eligibility criteria so again when we were talking about sebi you the minimum qualification that is required on your part is for you to be a law graduate you do not have any other qualification you are not even required to you know have a uh, any practical experience or a post qualification experience once you graduate but that has been mandated when it comes to rbi so see if you look at the educational qualification over here you would see that yeah you are required to be a law, law graduate that's the minimum qualification required but then you also have a you know condition with regard to the percentage that you score so the minimum percentage that is required of you to be eligible for this exam is that of 50% right so you must secure a minimum of 50% as an aggregate in all the semesters during your uh, law school and one more thing like this is a really funny thing so see there is a difference between educational qualifications the minimum educational qualifications required and the desirable conditions so though here it has been said that the minimum qualification required would be 50 but uh, it rbi would always you know prefer those candidates that have secured more than 60% in uh, their college uh, you know in as an aggregate in their college life uh after that with um, besides uh, being a law graduate with a minimum of 50% you are also required to have a two years post qualification experience so this was not there when you compared it with sebi right you did not have a minimum percentage criteria you did not even have a minimum of post qualification experience that was required so even fresh graduates would be eligible to sit for grade a legal exam of sebi but fresh graduates would not be eligible to sit for the rbi grade b legal exam why because obviously they require you to have a minimum post qualification experience of 2 years right and here this desirable thing is basically for the percentage that i just stated and uh, in case you are a phd uh, in case you have you know done your phd then you get a relaxation of 5 years in the upper limit so for phd students they can be eligible to sit for the exam till the age of 37 and for lnm there is a relaxation of 3 years that is uh, that those people would be eligible to sit for the exam till the age of 35 now one more thing like uh, the syllabus of this exam would be discussed by my friend shiva but if you look at the syllabus you would see that corporate laws banking laws right so these would these are actually not a part of your syllabus when it comes to paper 1 or paper 2 of rbi but that does not mean that you don't need to go through it because just think about it guys you would be working in the market money market regulator of india how can you you know actually expect yourself to have no knowledge about fema laws no knowledge about the banking laws that are applicable no knowledge about the company laws that's just not feasible right so even though they are part of the syllabus when it comes to clearing the exam uh, when you look at the notifications of the past years you would see that in the uh, qualifications that are required it has been stated that candidates need to have advanced knowledge yeah i'm not saying a working knowledge or you know a minimum knowledge they have actually stated that they need to have advanced knowledge in case of in areas like company laws security laws right banking regulations fema regulations so on and so forth so don't just think that just because they are not a part of your paper 1 or paper 2 syllabus you are not required to know because even though they might not be a part of your you can still be asked questions from those areas you know often those fields when it comes to your interview and even in your english paper the argumentative essays that you actually 
you know would be required to attend they will also be having questions where you know you need to write an argumentative essay on say the current fdi regulations that might be prevailing or you know some recent changes that might have come in the fema regulation so you need to know these regulations if you actually aspire to be a part of rbi in future right so this was a brief uh, uh, idea about the capital market next let's quickly move on to the examination pattern just a second i'll share it uh, yeah so if you look at the examination pattern over here not like yeah obviously it's a bit different when it comes to your sebi exam like if you look at the different uh, you know sectors where the RB, other rbi exams are conducted so for different streams so there the pattern is the same like you have phase 1 phase 2 followed by an interview but here the exam pattern is slightly different when it comes to the legal uh, stream of the rbi grade b exam so here your first paper would be on general knowledge of law now focus on the word general knowledge you you need not have uh, you know like an advanced knowledge of the subjects that are a part of your syllabus but you need to have a working knowledge or a general idea of what those subjects are all about okay so this is what your paper 1 is going to be about and the marking division is something like it's a uh, it's a paper of 150 marks wherein you would be getting 30 marks for objective questions and 120 marks for descriptive questions so again like just as your sebi was a completely mcq based exam it's not the same with rbi rbi tests both it tests your you know knowledge objective knowledge of the paper it also tests your subjective knowledge and obviously the focus on subjective knowledge is more because you get 120 marks for descriptive questions over here right and the duration that you actually get for completing this paper is around 3 hours and uh, if you ask for the number of questions that are there so for 30 marks like you get around 15 questions when we looked at the past year papers we saw that there were around 15 questions and each question carried two marks when it came to the objective one now uh, for the descriptive ones you have around four to five questions and they also have sub division so you don't have a fixed pattern of the descriptive questions over there but the maximum number of questions that can come would be five and they would further be subdivided into different uh, related questions over there right so this was paper 1 moving on to paper 2 now paper 2 of the exam would test your uh, descriptive skills as far as english is concerned so this would be a 100 marks paper the syllabus in detail would again be discussed by shiva but for for now you just need to know that yes it's a descriptive exam that is that is actually going to test your pressy writing your uh, you know reading comprehension co comprehension reading abilities then uh, your ability to type an essay and it would also be testing your ability to you know a uh, draft business or office correspondence so these are the two papers that you need to clear when it comes to the rbi grade b and obviously after these papers you have your interview session and another very stark difference between uh, the sebi grade a legal exam and the rbi grade b legal exam would be that remember when we were talking about uh, the selection criteria so as far as sebi was concerned paper 1 Or, or rather phase 1 the marks that you secure in phase 1 were only qualifying in nature so you needed to you know secure the cut off only to be eligible for the next phase your phase 1 marks would in no way determine your selection uh, as an officer towards the end but when it comes to rbi here both these papers would actually determine your selection in the interview so you need to score really well in both paper 1 and paper 2 and obviously perform really well uh, in the interview to be eligible to sit for the exam and guys let me tell you this exam is actually not an easy one because you have really few vacancies so if you see at the 2019 notification there was just one vacancy just one vacancy so you can understand the kind of competition that you need to face when it comes to the rbi grade b exam right so this is definitely not an easy exam and you should not take it you know like so this was all from my side this is the kind of battle that you need to prepare for let's have a look at the you know weapons that you require and the skills that you need to actually succeed here right so shiva would you uh, like to tell us a few things about course. the weapons needed yes and thank you so much jyoti for having such an explanatory uh, session and i'm i'm quite sure that now at least all the aspirants all the participants are quite uh, you know they're clear enough regarding the eligibility regarding all the aspects and other things now since as jyoti mentioned that it's really important to perform well in here and also cumulatively as the marks will be added with the interview and also as now we know because descriptive part has been given a, to say highest of the significance as concerned to this exam 
So it's very important and desirable at the same time uh, that we know what we have in our hand. और उसके लिए बहुत जरूरी है कि हम समझें कि सिलेबस क्या है बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली सी लाइक अगर कोई भी आप एक बैटल पे जाते हो योर योर फाइटिंग सम एनिमी फॉर एग्जांपल आपको उस एनिमी के बारे में पता होना चाहिए लाइक like, uh, आपके पास बेस्ट ऑफ फाइटर जेट भी होगा स्टिल यू कैन नॉट रियली पुट डाउन एन एनिमी जो अंडर वाटर है सो so, आपको उसी तरीके से उसको टैकल करना पड़ेगा एंड हियर द आर्मरी दैट यू हैव इन योर हैंड इज द सिलेबस एंड दैट इज वाई इट इज Uh, of highly uh, high importance that you know your syllabus first of all, and meanwhile you are preparing for this exam or any exam for that matter. You keep in mind your syllabus all the time so that you do not really deviate from the path uh, on from which you have to move on. So with this, uh, let's just know our syllabus, uh, and this will be the syllabus for paper one. As just Jyoti discussed, that there will be two papers in this exam: paper one and paper two. paper 1 as she already told uh, all of you guys that it consists of two kinds of questions the objective as well as the descriptive or the subjective for that matter objective questions are for 30 marks and the rest 120 marks are for the descriptive part here let's first just know uh, that what is the list of all the uh, 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 to say um, the syllabus or the uh, topics that are important for the syllabus so the first is the constitutional law and we'll further discuss as to what all fields or what all topics are more important into them specifically but just first let's see that what are the basic um, to say parts of this syllabus so for paper 1 as we know it is for the general knowledge of law so uh, some general and un understanding every aspirant needs to have in that regard so the first one is the constitutional law jisme hamara constitution hai obviously then we have the administrative law the third one is the principles of statutory interpretation because uh, this used to be the uh, one of the subjects when we were in our law schools uh, interpretation of law which uh, maybe at that time it was undermined but truly here it is really important because uh, whenever uh, you are at a position when you don't uh, not only have to understand the law but also interpret it in the best manner so though the we, we construe that it is the work of the judiciary but when we are into some administrative and also some authoritative jobs for that matter it is important for us to understand the essence of any law and that is why it is important to keep in mind that what and how can this particular law be interpreted then the fourth one we have law of evidence which is very crucial then fifth is the indian contract act 1872 sixth is the transfer of property act seventh is the negotiable instruments act uh, another thing i would like to add in here because uh, negotiable instrument uh, acts is it, it, it's a very small act for that matter and also many a times it is not paid a lot of heed by a lot of uh, judicial aspirants mostly or any other kind of legal uh, aspirants but here this is of prime importance because uh, here and specifically when we talk about section 130 138 dishonor of check because आप जब भी एनालाइज करोगे इनके जो प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन पेपर्स हैं वो आपको आरबीआई की जो ऑफिशियल वेबसाइट है उस पर आपको इनके पास ये पेपर्स मिल जाएंगे आप उसमें जब भी जैसे भी आप एनालाइज करोगे यू विल नो दैट मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस इन सम ऑफ द अदर वे आर फ्रॉम द नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एक्ट रिगार्डिंग द चेक डिसऑनर ऑफ चेक बाउंसिंग ऑफ चेक और एक्सेट्रा इसलिए इसको बहुत ज्यादा ध्यान देना यहाँ पे जरूरी है देन नेक्स्ट वी हैव द रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट आफ्टर दैट वी हैव द कोड ऑफ सिविल प्रोसीजर and then we have the legal drafting now the reason why i have uh, highlighted the uh, legal drafting in red color is that it literally needs to be highlighted that way it is because when we are into our law school it is very like um, unlikely that we get into the practical aspects of legal drafting but yes of course due to the eligibility criteria for uh, this rbi grade b exam two years uh, post qualification ex uh, uh, experience is required but तब भी ऐसा हो जाता है कभी कभी यू आर इन टू प्रैक्टिस बट स्टिल यू आर नॉट वेरी वेल वर्स्ट विद द लीगल ड्राफ्टिंग थिंग एंड लेट मी टेल यू यूर इन दिस पेपर लीगल ड्राफ्टिंग हैज ओनली वन क्वेश्चन बट दैट ओनली वन क्वेश्चन इज फॉर थर्टी मार्क्स सो यू जस्ट कैन अंडरस्टैंड इट इज लाइक वन फोर्थ ऑफ द चंक ऑफ इंटायर वन ट्वेंटी मार्क्स दैट हैव बीन अलॉटेड टू द डिस्क्रिप्टिव पार्ट so it's really really important that we uh, you know uh, to say ki choti choti cheeze hain they are uh, like normal days may be not really or uh, maybe not really serious about them but this is the beauty of this exam that regarding other law subjects which are very crucial in other exams you only need general knowledge for that matter but for those which are mostly undermined in other exams they are the star or to say they are the uh, lead actors over here so be it the uh, negotiable instruments act or be it the legal drafting etc now when uh, we are uh, actually our team tried to analyze the question papers for the previous years for the rbi exam 
we got to know some specific areas of questions uh, that that were repetitively asked for that matter as jyoti has already told you that in the uh, objective section we have 15 questions for 30 marks so it would be two marks each in that scenario at least one question was there from each of these and believe me three questions were there from the negotiable instruments act alone so here again you can understand as to when only one question is coming from vast subjects like constitutional law law of evidence cpc etc three questions are coming from one particular act so that that i think it's like uh, it's clear enough to give you an uh, idea as to kitna important hai ye kuch kuch jo hamare acts jinpe maine abhi emphasize kiya bhi hai then when it comes to constitutional law questions related to fundamental rights because obviously they are fundamental and they really cannot be left apart fundamental rights preamble etc were there and the reason why i have put maxims and case laws separately is that ye dono hi cheeze kahin pe bhi syllabus mein alag se obviously marked nahi hai but when you analyze the papers teen se char questions aapke case laws pe hi aa jate hain and that is like uh, we uh, might have might be thinking ki it's okay if we substantiate it written enough with sections or articles it would be enough but that truly is not the case kyunki kai sare questions directly case laws se aate hain like for example they'll give you the verdict of that particular case and they'll ask you as to in which case was this held or they'll give you the name of the case and they'll ask like it must be a landmark case but still you should have knowledge of that and also there were significant questions from legal maxims as well so isiliye uh, it is advisable ki jab aap isko prepare kare is syllabus mein aap jab uh, step wise move karenge so aap apne maxims ko case laws ko sections pe jo aapki command hai aur question paper ki jo requirement hai usko dhyan rakhte hue hi prepare kare so this was all for paper 1 let's see that what syllabus we have for paper 2 So the paper two, as uh, Jyoti has already uh, told, that it is for the English, and it will test the skills for English comprehension, your descriptive uh, skills in English, uh, etc. And in this specifically, we have an essay. Uh, all, all of this obviously will be in English. Then we have pressy writing, and as we know, pressy writing is something that uh, uh, we really feel difficult to do because many a times it is easy to express a thing into a lot of words, but pressy writing is one thing. that you have to actually concrete your down your words you have to uh, put down your words and then uh, in a very minimalistic manner you have to define something and that is why we are emphasizing so much on the syllabus because you need to have good hold and practice for that matter because it is not just an exam that you can uh, just uh, believe that yes i have knowledge of law and i'll be able to clear it no that is not the case knowledge of law is something that is basic here working upon that knowledge in a smart manner is that what you need over here in this exam then next we have the comprehension that unseen passage that we already have already seen many times that is no more unseen but yes uh, you need to have uh, command on your writing and also articulation skills for that matter and then again something comes here in red color which is the business or office correspondence now why again i have marked it into red color is because uh, the kind of position of a manager or legal manager that you would hold once you clear this exam and we hope all of you do and uh, vacancies are enough for that matter so then uh, there there may come a lot of uh, to say incidences wherein you have to write any kind of correspondence for that matter no correspondence simply a means of communication like when we were in school we used to write the letters to the editor complaining about some electricity problem in our locality so and so that also is a kind of correspondence but but obviously that will not be a part of uh, this exam but here correspondence like uh, relating to uh, we i have also uh, put down a question from the previous year paper of 2016 and as it says that on behalf of the reserve bank of india draft a circular so that is an official circular that here is the office correspondence urging all commercial banks to organize seminars in the rural areas this and that so basically this is what being in that position you need to do so this is something that is they are desiring uh, out of you and they believe that you should have a command on this now as we discussed about the legal drafting in the very previous slide i'm sure that many a times it is a difficult thing for us to actually uh, draft something because not just because drafting is difficult because you need uh, to make sure that you do not miss out something that is very very important and further here it's not like you have a week or 15 days to draft a particular thing uh, or draft any legal notice for that matter you have only some minutes for that matter and that is why it is very very important that you know what you have to write and then you also know in how much time you have to write तो यहाँ पे लीगल ड्राफ्टिंग में आपको लिटरली हेल्प करने के लिए वी सीरियसली हैव अ वेरी वेरी फुल फ्लेजेड कोर्स ऑन लीगल ड्राफ्टिंग एंड ट्रस्ट मी गाइस इट इज नॉट समथिंग दैट वी आर रियली इंडोसिंग एंड यूजिंग द प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर दैट मैटर इट विल लिटरली हेल्प यू अलॉट 
and uh, if you would want we would put down the link in the description box i would request yeah. if that would be possible so then you can go through the landing page of legal drafting course and it will come really handy because it is not only legal drafting but also legal drafting keeping in mind the requirements of various legal exams as well so here agar aapko aisa lagta hai ki aapka haath itna strong nahi hai like uh, trust me honestly i also might be a bit skeptic about legal drafting when it uh, if i really have to so as a scenario may it will be really handy to you and once you're done with this webinar we would like uh, encourage ki aap usko ja ke par dekhenge to we really hope it will be a good uh, chunk for you all then as now we already discussed that answer writing is the uh, you know key that can get you through this so basically you know there are three things that are most important for you first general knowledge of law obviously and then the right approach to that secondly because descriptive answers are have been given such an importance in this exam so it will be the skill of answer writing and thirdly personality development obviously because it will not only help you get through this exam but also help you in life uh, further uh, uh, phases of your life as well so for the answer writing i have been discussing i'll be discussing here two basic and most important methods of answer writing so one is the ibc method the first one is this uh, it might seem a little daunting but it is the most you know it's the simplest uh, form of answer writing but then again it has it has to be done very smartly so ibc method jo hai usme hamara i is for introduction of course b is for the body and c is for the conclusion basically ए, एक आइडियल आंसर में हम ये देखते हैं कि कुछ भी चीज को आपको अगर अच्छे से आर्टिकुलेट करके प्रेजेंट करना है सो यू नीड टू फर्स्ट ऑब्वियसली यू नीड टू कैच द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ऑब्वियसली अगर आप वो ही नहीं कैच कर पा रहे हो एंड हियर इन इज व्हाट योर प्रैक्टिस विल हेल्प यू कि आप समझ पा रहे हो कि एग्जामिनर आपसे एग्जैक्टली exactly पूछ क्या रहा है क्योंकि कभी कभी क्वेश्चन इतने कॉम्प्लीकेटेड होते हैं बट दे आर आस्किंग ओनली वेरी सिंपल थिंग सो इन दी इंट्रोडक्शन यू इंट्रोड्यूस योर आंसर and now here i have also like to make it a more to make it easier and more convenient for you all kuch examples maine yahan pe diye hain jaise ki introduction mein aap start kar sakte ho ek relevant section ya article ke sath so for example i uh, will deal with one example in the end of this uh, method so it can be started with a uh, with the accurate section or article as uh, the requirement of the question is also you can quote some uh, uh, law commission report or recommendation because uh, ye jo kuch authentic documents hote hain they come from the government and they are probably the biggest source that you, that you can quote in your exam but then also it depends aapke question ki need pe aisa nahi hai ki uh, question demand hi nahi kar raha and then you are putting it like ki i have to wait has been told or uh, i believe it will be good no that is only smart work that you actually understand ki kyun aapko kya add karna hai kya nahi add karna hai या फिर आप किसी फैक्ट के साथ शुरू कर सकते हो uh, तो कोई भी ऐसा क्वेश्चन है जो करंट किसी स्टेटस पे बात करता है जो उसके लीगल स्टेटस पे बात करता है लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल एस ज्योति मेंशन कि कोई भी एफडीआई पे अगर कोई क्वेश्चन आ जाता है फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट में सो यू कैन स्टार्ट अप विद अ फैक्ट की इंडिया का इतना परसेंट जो है इनकम वो एफ के थ्रू होती है विच विल गिव यू अ वेरी रोबस्ट स्टार्ट इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस एंड देन ऑल्सो टू सेव योर वर्ड्स एज वेल एज टाइम फॉर दैट मैटर क्योंकि आपको फिर रेपिटेटिवली उसको एंगेज नहीं करना पड़ेगा वन अदर थिंग दैट नीड्स टू बी सीन हियर इज कि यहाँ पे मार्क्स तो बता देते हैं कि कितने मार्क्स का क्वेश्चन है वर्ड लिमिट हैज नो वेयर बीन गिवन गिवन इन द क्वेश्चन पेपर इसीलिए आपको भावनाओं में जिसको हम कहते हैं बहना नहीं है बिकॉज मेनी टाइम इट हैपेंस इट ट्रूली हैपेंस बिकॉज व्हेन यू बिलीव कि आपको ये आंसर आता है यू टेंड टू राइट ऑन एंड राइट ऑन एंड राइट ऑन एंड देन यू रियलाइज ओ आई एम नॉट लेफ्ट विद टाइम एंड देन यू जस्ट पुट इट टू और थ्री लाइन दैट इज डेवेस्टेटिंग सीरियसली इफ यू आर अटेम्प्टिंग अटेम्प्ट इक्वली वेल Of course, there will be some questions. Just me, your command is better. It will be better. Maybe you will not get anything. That will happen. So you, uh, you know, using your knowledge base, you try to answer. But be smart to. And here, basically, we are emphasizing so much in answer writing and answer writing practice as well. Now, getting back to the body, body must address the demand of the question. So whatever the, is the question, you have to add it there. Surplus, add it there. You have to explain it. then it may have more facts then again depending upon your question and the need of your question aap aur facts usme dal sakte hain and then again comes something in the red color which we are all paying so much attention upon is the case law because believe me aap uh, rbi ki website pe ja ke inka previous year question paper dekhiyega so usme in the instructions like use blue pen uh, black pen and all instructions are given there is this instruction specifically written ki it is desired that you put up uh, the facts and reasons for your answer along with case laws like seriously in all of my experience this was the very first exam jiske question paper mein maine instructions mein likha hua dekha tha ki case law aap add kare answers mein this very uh, emphasizes upon ki what are they looking from you wo aap se kya chaah rahe hain and that is why if there is any case law jo aapke point aapke uh, argument se related hai 
do make sure that you're putting it into the question and you're making it clear that you know about this case law. Then you can add with it with, with analysis also, and then uh, an all-encompassing answer should be there. That you try to touch every area of the area, but then again, it, is, it doesn't have to be an essay. Every answer doesn't have to be an essay, but yes, you try to cover it in a short way. Every way, you cover it. And then use of legal terms like, if there is a question, then you use void of initio or the status quo for that matter, or sign quo non. There are various legal terms which actually give you the brownie points. You have to give a little bit. चेरी ऑन द केक आपके जो केक आप प्रिपेयर कर रहे हो उसमें चेरी लगा देता है एज इन बिकॉज द एग्जामिनर बिलीव दैट यू आर वेल वर्स्ड विद द लीगल एस्पेक्ट्स एज वेल देन फाइनली यू हैव द कंक्लूजन जिसमें आप कंक्लूडिंग रिमार्क दोगे सोल्यूशन दोगे अगर ऐसा कोई क्वेश्चन है तो एंड देन यू हैव टू बी ऑप्टिमिस्टिक दिस इज फॉर द केस ऑफ एसए क्योंकि एसए क्या होता है मेनी टाइम्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल पॉवर्टी पे ऐसे आ गया या फिर लीगल आस्पेक्ट जो है किसी भी चीज के चाइल्ड लेबर के लीगल आस्पेक्ट आ गए सो मे बी Like obviously मन में आपको बहुत दुख फील हो रहा होगा कि the situation is really bad this and that I'm not asking you to be really you know to be uh, hypocritic about it or to lie about something but then again you have to as an administrator or as a, as a person being a part of the government because then again you will be part of a government body you have to be optimistic and you need to show the examiner that yes these are the problems but if we do these and these efforts then definitely we can get to a good situation in the future and thus please uh, try to be optimistic and बहुत सारी शिकायतें होंगी दैट यू कैन वर्क अपॉन वंस यू गेट इनटू द इनटू द प्रैक्टिस शिवा या आई कैन सी दैट हाउ इंपॉर्टेंटली यू आर डिस्क्राइबिंग कैन यू प्लीज अ बिट स्लाइटली स्लो बिकॉज ऑडियंस आर या ऑफ कोर्स ऑफ कोर्स थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एंड वी आर श्योर यू आर लो यू आर एक्सप्लेनिंग वेरी कॉम्प्रिहेंसिवली या प्लीज गो अहेड या थैंक यू ओके ओके श्योर आई विल मेक श्योर सो जैसा भी हमने जो आईबीसी मेथड अभी हमने देखा इंट्रोडक्शन बॉडी कंक्लूजन का उसी का एक एग्जाम्पल मैंने क्वेश्चन लिया है एंड दिस इज फ्रॉम दू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन आर पी आई पेपर सो द क्वेश्चन टू माइनर्स कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अंडर द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट एटीन सेवेंटी टू सो दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन अब हम देखते हैं कि जो हमने अभी आईबीसी मेथड देखा उस पर हम इसको कैसे अप्लाई करके आंसर दे सकते हैं बिकॉज uh, होता क्या है जब आपके दिमाग में एक स्ट्रक्चर प्रिपेयर होगा सो यू वॉन्ट बी यू वॉन्ट टेंट टू वेस्ट एनी टाइम इन दी टाइम ऑफ एग्जाम आर तो आपको पता है कि मुझे ये स्ट्रक्चर अप्रोच मुझे अपनाना है एंड सो एंड सो आप उसको बहुत इजीली और जल्दी अप्रोच कर पाएंगे सो अकॉर्डिंग मॉडल आंसर इसका हो सकता था सी देर कुड बी मेनी अदर वेज ऑल्सो बट जो भी हमने मेथड डिस्कस किया उसके अकॉर्डिंग जैसे ही हो सकता था लाइक यू कुड बिगिन विद सेक्शन इलेवन ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट प्रोवाइड्स फॉर द कॉम्पिटेंसी ऑफ टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अंडर विच अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद अ माइनर इज वॉइड अप इनिशियो नाउ अगर हम इसको एनालाइज करें तो एक लाइन में We have given so much of data. Like it is a very small sentence, but yet it has given the section. It also has told that what this section is talking about. Then it has also told that is my minor ki competency batata hai, or ye bhi batata hai ki agar aap minor ke saath contract karte ho, to it will be void ab initio. So, your introduction bhi ek line me pura ho gaya. Aapne bahut saara facts, aapne question ko address bhi kar diya introduction me, and you have saved time and also words for that matter. फिर जब आप बॉडी में मूव करो आप इसमें एक दो लाइन और भी ऐड कर सकते हो बट डिपेंड्स अगेन ऑन द डिमांड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन देन जो आपकी बॉडी है उसमें आप जैसे ऑल जिसको हम, हमने कहा कि एक ऑल इन कंपासिंग आप आंसर बनाइए हर एस्पेक्ट्स को टच करने की कोशिश कीजिए तो उसमें यू कैन टॉक अबाउट कंडीशन वेन अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मे बी वैलिड सो क्योंकि देर आर सम कंडीशन जब कॉन्ट्रैक्ट माइनर के साथ भी वैलिड हो जाता है तो दैट विल शो एंड गिव एन आइडिया टू द एग्जामिनर कि आपको सिर्फ ये ही नहीं पता है कि वॉइड ऑफ इनिशियो है आपको उसके एक्सेप्शन भी पता है सो बिकॉज क्वेश्चन में वो पूछा पूछ रहा है कि एग्जामिन द एंटायर लॉ रिलेटिंग टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद माइनर तो आपको एंटायरिटी में ही उसको डिस्कस करना पड़ेगा देन यू डिस्कस वन टू पॉइंट एंड एवरीथिंग एंड देन अगर आपको कुछ और उसका लगता है एंड देन हियर कम्स द केस लॉ जो मतलब इट इज लाइक आई थिंक किसी का मेमोरी लॉस भी होगा स्टिल इफ यू is uh, in a contract he will not be able to forget this because this is such an important case when it comes to contract with minor which was mohri bibi versus dharmodas ghosh so is case ko agar aap ab now imagine agar aap isko skip kar dete hain is case ko to aur koi bhi ek aur dusra aspirant hai jo obviously isko likhega hi so you can imagine you aap aap samajh sakte ho ki kisko zyada points milenge kyunki ye bahut important case tha the examiner is wo question padhte hi expect kar raha hai ki ye case to isme hoga hi hoga so you need to make sure that you are putting this as well and then you can finally write the conclusion jo isme aap dal sakte hain ki bhai in a, in a general sense uh, contract with a minor is void of initio but as discussed above the in following in the above discussed situations it is so and so that and that so it needs to be crisp clear for that matter 
Now here the second method. We'll be discussing only two main methods here. It is the IRAC method. Now IRAC method is the I for issue rule application conclusion. Now uh, the reason why I decided to put this method as well uh, in into this uh, discussion today was that IBC method, which we have discussed just now. वो जो से जनरल वो है जो वो बहुत इजीली आप किसी पे भी अप्लाई कर सकते हो बट जब हम लीगल एग्जाम्स की बात करते हैं तो बहुत सारे क्वेश्चंस हाइपोथेटिकल आते हैं जैसे कि अभी हम एक और भी आगे भी डिस्कस करेंगे कि हाइपोथेटिकल क्वेश्चंस में जहां पे कुछ भी इतनी ज्यादा क्लैरिटी नहीं होती है वहां पे दिस कम्स एज अ सीवियर तो आईरेक मेथड में आप सबसे पहले इशू डिसाइड करोगे कि क्या पूछ क्या रहा है उसमें आपको क्या किसके बारे में सोचना है then rule application conclusion so please keep in mind this is mostly for hypothetical or situation based questions now we have another uh, example to this in the next slide jaise ye bhi 2016 paper ka hi ek uh, sample maine question pick kiya hai so the question is z or z uh, however you feel uh, convenient with it under the influence of madness attempts to kill a a in attempting to defend himself caused grievous hurt to z or z Discuss the liability of Z and A under the law. Now, एक बार जब रीडिंग देते हैं बिकॉज अभी तो वी आर वेरी रिलैक्स वी आर क्वाइट रिलैक्स इस क्वेश्चन को समझने के लिए बट एग्जाम में क्या होता है यू ऑलरेडी हैव अ लॉट टू डू सो उसमें क्या होता है एक बहुत ही हैफजार्ड सा क्रिएट हो सकता है माइंड में इसमें जो आईरैक मेथड है वो आपके बहुत हैंडी आता है बिकॉज लेट सी अगर हम आईरैक मेथड से इसको सॉल्व करने की कोशिश करेंगे सो फर्स्ट वील सी कि इशू क्या है तो इशू क्या है Whether A is ये देखिए जो इशू है वो आपके लास्ट जो सेंटेंस है ना डिस्कस लाइबिलिटी ऑफ Z एंड A तो आपको ये समझना है कि इशू दोनों से रिलेटेड होगा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देन वी हैव द इशू वेदर A इज लाइबल फॉर अटेम्प्ट टू मर्डर ऑफ Z एंड द सेकेंड इशू इज वेदर Z इज लाइबल फॉर कॉजिंग ग्रीवियस हर्ट टू A सो यहाँ पे जैसे ही आपको इशू क्लियर हुआ यू आर डेफिनेटली एबल टू क्लैरिफाई इन योर माइंड कि अब आपको आगे क्या डिस्कस करना है अब मतलब ऐसा नहीं है कि लाइबिलिटी क्या है क्या है यू डोंट हैव टू लाइक इट्स लाइक वेरी क्लियर नाउ देन एज सोन एज यू आर एबल टू डिसाइड द इशू यू नाउ कैन वेरी इजिली अंडरस्टैंड कि इसका रूल क्या था इसमें किस किस कौन से सेक्शन uh, को या कौन से लीगल प्रोविजन को इन्फ्लिक्ट किया जा रहा है so is my rule for the first one is definitely attempts to murder is section 307 of ipc now here is your general knowledge of law which will come in handy but then again skills of answer writing are also important then when you are talking about grievous hurt you have section 320 of the ipc then next step is apply, you have to apply these rules so now you do your analysis as to put your minds put your brains ki kya wo actually attempt attempt to murder ke liye uh, responsible ya liable hoga ya nahi ya wo grievous hurt cause karne ke liye liable hoga ya nahi so once you're done then you can add leading case law agar koi isme aapka case law hai us question mein then finally you can answer your issues in the conclusion now please keep in mind isko aise heading laga ke nahi likhna hai that this is the issue this is the rule this is the application wo oh, it will look like this only it look like aapne slide usko wahan pe likh diya hai so you don't have to do ye aapke mental exercise hai you have to clarify this aapko ye jo ek hierarchy hai ye apne dimag mein rakhni hai usi hisab se aapko answer mein put up karni hai you don't really have to write ki rule and then colon laga ke next line se aap rule likho that is not the thing you don't have to do that keep that clear in your mind isko ye aapke mind ka ek mental exercise hai because jab ek structure dimag mein already hota hai it becomes really easy for you to articulate and just put the blocks into different like isliye uh, it is uh, often said that you should organize your things organize your room organize your almira we always say right because then we know ki aapne kis section mein kya rakha hai aur kis section mein kya rakhna hai so then aapko ye jo ek time waste hota hai ki yahan hoga ya wahan hoga that is really saved and aise exams mein time is the only treasure that you have believe me because us time pe nahi bhi aata hoga koi question you still if you have time you can brainstorm बट टाइम ही नहीं है तो आता हुआ भी छूट जाता है दैट इज वाई प्रैक्टिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड टाइम मैनेजमेंट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड विद दिस आई थिंक वी विल बी डन फॉर दिस एंड वी अगेन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइन एंड वी होप कि इट वाज अ गुड सेशन फॉर यू ऑल एंड या वी वी आर ओपन टू क्वेश्चंस इफ एनी यस इफ देयर आर एनी क्वेश्चंस प्लीज राइट सो पार्टिसिपेंट्स सो फार वी हैव लाइक हर्ड अ लॉट ऑफ फ्रॉम ज्योति एंड शिवा and if you have uh, any question uh, you can directly ask from our experts uh vaishnavi uh, we got a question from vaishnavi and uh, she wanted to ask uh, the uh, the very basic question 
uh, she wanted to know how to prepare for the entrance test and which material uh, needs to be used by her and uh, roles and responsibilities of legal officer you guys can so i think we got roles and responsibilities jyoti would be in a better capacity to answer and i think rest i would be uh, like uh, able to answer so jyoti like if you would like to take okay. up okay so like as far as the roles and responsibilities are concerned uh, like vashnavi i had like you know started our discussion today with this thing only like even though you might not be required to you know have ideas about corporate laws or you can say banking uh, act or you know fema regulations in this regard but when you are actually you know you get appointed to the position of a legal officer in rbi these would be the primary areas that you would need to work with that is why i you know i had specifically mentioned that your notification asks you to have advanced knowledge in these areas the only reason for this be that because when you become an rbi grade b legal officer you would be you know required to draft office correspondence the way you know shiva had brilliantly discussed in this webinar itself then you would be required to you know know the applicable currency rates uh, that are prevalent with regard to different countries the dif- the changes that occur in the fema regulations the different uh, corporate laws that would be applicable the labor laws for that matter so these would be the areas that you need to you know have a hold over because these are the primary legislations or the primary you know areas in which you would be required to work for once you become a grade b legal officer so this would be the role once you become an officer right uh, also she is asking for the books or the material she can refer along with uh, she is asking that can she intern under some legal officer intern under some legal illegal officer as in rbi grade b legal officer right yeah. okay so see basically the uh, you can if you actually get an opportunity like this i matlab i am not very confident about you know uh, getting an internship under a grade b legal officer and if you are asking me for this internship so far as the uh, qualification that is required for the exam is concerned no that's not going to have any relevance in that regard so for that you need like if you are a graduate you need to show them your experience as an advocate or you know you might even be a professor in a law school or something so they need a proof of that internship in you know as an officer is not something that is very common uh, but yeah they do have they do invite applications once uh, say in 6 months like you can actually look for opportunities on the website of rbi under opportunities at rbi so you can you know have a look there okay and uh, regarding right. the materials uh, for that matter see because jo uh, exam ki requirement hai it is very basic and uh, that is why you don't really need to have uh, very advanced books for that matter so whatever i would prefer that whatever books you had used while you were in the law school uh, i think they will be because you are more uh, to say equipped with them you know how to use those books so i would really suggest that and believe me once you just get to see the questions and kinds of questions abhi jaise humne abhi kuch illustrate as in jo previous year questions humne dekhe bhi so they were mostly like very general in their understanding so i would suggest that whichever book you feel comfortable in like now uh, many feel comfortable with mp jain which is a very exhaustive book for constitution yeah if if you feel okay with it it's okay jain pandey narendra kumar or any book for that matter so there is no any specific need of a particular book or resource for that matter but just yes uh, जिसमें आप कंफर्टेबल हो जिसमें आप इजिली नेविगेट कर सकते हो अपने आप को यूज दैट एंड ऑल्सो डू नॉट मिस आउट ऑन द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन बिकॉज देन अगेन इट विल गिव यू एन आइडिया कि उन बुक्स में से भी आपको किस तरह रिफाइन कर, करके पढ़ना है सो uh, so, आप आरबीआई की जो ऑफिशियल वेबसाइट पे जाओगे सो यू विल फाइंड सम ब्लॉक्स उसमें करंट वेकेंसीज में यू विल बी एबल टू फाइंड दी सैम्पल पेपर्स के नाम से एक टैब होगा सो आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट इट्स कन्वीनियंट यू टू फाइंड इट आउट तो उसमें जब आप देखोगे तो इट विल बी लाइक इजी फॉर यू टू डू इट आई होप it's answered your question is answered yeah and in addition to this like guys a quick update we would like you know you already know that we have launched a sebi grade a legal course like i had discussed about that course also in detail in the previous webinar so we would soon be launching an rbi grade b legal course as well so once that's done we'll definitely yeah. let you know and you can have a look at the landing page right also uh, those who are asking for the legal resources which they can refer so as we have seen that there are so many people who are preparing for judiciary as well side by side they are preparing for legal officer rbi grade b examination so uh, we at law seeker have launched our uh, judiciary course so they can uh, check that out on our site 
uh, there they will find a reliable sources which will be helpful for RBI Grade B examination for legal officer. Yes. Uh, so uh, we have another participant, uh, Chetali. Okay. Uh, please ask your question. Hi, Chetali. Hi. Actually, I haven't attended your last webinar, but I want to join the SEBI A legal course which you were telling right now. So how can I join? Because I don't know how to. Uh, okay. So you I can wait. Anu, can you share the link that I'll just share with you, like of the landing page? Okay, we will uh, we will communicate this uh, after this webinar. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, like, uh, will I be getting the mail or how, to what medium you will be? Yes. yes. Okay. Anu, uh, I'm sharing the link with you here in the chat box. You can share it with them. Right. Okay. So I can. Um, Chitali, please. Uh, uh, Chitali, please uh, drop your mail over our chat box. And we will definitely provide you with uh, the link and the things which you are asking. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. okay thank, thank you. you. Uh, we have with us uh, Yashaswini. Uh, please ask your question. Hi, Yashaswini. Hi, ma'am. Uh, so I want to know, like, how many aspirants are competing for this exam? Now that is something like you know. See. The more popular an exam is, obviously you are going uh, going to get you know a larger number of participants. But uh, like you know, SEBI Grade A, or as far as SEBI Grade A and RBI Grade B legal exams are concerned, they are not really you know that popular as com compared to Judiciary or UPSC for that matter. So yeah, they are popular as far as other streams are concerned. But when it comes to the legal stream, you still you know have an opportunity to clear it because those are not that well known. Yeah, we are definitely, you know, like they are people are getting to know about these uh, exams uh, with a, on a daily basis. But uh, to give you a clear idea with regard to the number of people who are competing, I like really don't think like we can we can have an exact number. Do you, Shiva? You think we can give them a number? No, I only think that uh, maybe even you know it's not uh, the number of participants yeah. or applicants for that matter. I think the less number of vacancies. Vacancies, correct. So, you just uh, had one vacancy last year, so you can understand the kind of competition you would be having in this exam. Uh, and further, like, uh, like as much I can run my analysis into this, uh, due to the eligibility difference also, I think there will be a comparatively lower number. I'm not saying low number, but comparatively lower number. Because, of course, like in SEBI and other exams, fresh graduates can participate. So, it, it, you know, it opens the forum to a larger number, number of people. Correct. But then here, it cuts down to, like, uh, you need, uh, there is also an age bar for the, you need two years experience, like post-qualification experience. So, like, uh, I don't think it will be justified to comment upon an exact or even an approximate number. But yes, it is, it must be lesser than the other exams, SEBI or Judiciary. To, judiciary it's just, you know, judiciary and UPSC. To bolna and they are just different exams, to, totally different. So yeah, uh, so I would like uh, suggest Yashaswini, like uh, I think it would be better, uh, you know, to focus more on to, you know, that what are the opportunities in that current year. Because yes, of course, if there is only single vacancy, it will it is a very cutthroat competition. So even if five are participating or five aspirants are there, so still it is a big competition. But then again, I think if you have good command on your uh, syllabus and your own preparation, you will definitely get through this. So I think it, I think that is the most important thing for that. Yeah. Can you elaborate yes, actually, on qualification experience? Like, where should we do our experience in? Like, in law firms or which concern we should work? Okay, okay. So, I am answering this, Shiva. Like, if it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. See, you do not have a fixed requirement with regard to the area that you need to work in for that experience. But generally, see, if you are like, you know, a person who has the BCI uh, license, right? You have the bar council license. You need to show it at the time of you know being uh, like when you are filling up the form you need to show that yes you have this license for this long you have been practicing as an advocate under say for example if you're practicing under some senior lawyer you need a certificate you know that is signed by that lawyer saying that yes he, uh, he or she has been working with us for this long so it can be as an advocate you can even be a law school teacher you can be like at any place for that matter but the only thing that's required is that yes you do have a post qualification experience of two years so you can, you know, work in a firm, you can work as an advocate, that's fine. It's, it's like, you know, relevant as long as you do have an experience of those two years. Thank I you. Think. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you, Shaswini. Also, yeah, people were asking that why there is a very minimum uh, amount of recruitment. As, as you said that last year it was only one. 
so we can see the level of competition here also uh the sec uh, like did we discuss about the minimum age percentage required for this particular examination the minimum age is obviously you need see here the minimum like what is more important is the maximum age because see, you would be a graduate only after completing say 21 or 22 years of age so minimum and it's not like ki you just need to you know complete like aapki bas ek graduation khatam ho gayi hai na aap iske liye baith sakte ho aisa nahi hai to aapko 2 saal ki to qualification experience chahiye so minimum yahan par as such agar aap baaki stream se compare karo to it's 21 but kyunki yahan pe aapki post qualification experience zyada important ho jati hai to i guess the maximum age limit is more important right also uh, could you please tell the percentage that is required uh, like just after the law graduation what amount of, like what is the percentage uh, uh, is required to sitting in this particular examination that's 50 50 as you know an aggregate in all your semesters that is the minimum but unki like rbi ki preference unhi ke upar jati hai jinki 60% ya usse upar hai so agar you know you, you are really that interested in clearing it so i would say that agar aap law college mein abhi ho तो 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 60% मिनिमम आप एम करके कि यू नो यू नीड दैट टू 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 क्लियर दिस एग्जाम एग्जाम और इवन सिट सिट फॉर फॉर द द इन इन मतलब दैट एंड बट दिस ज्योति आल्सो लाइक लाइक ऐसे में हैव और समथिंग इट्स नथिंग टू बी डीमोटिवेटेड Honestly, uh, once you get into this exam, आपका जब personality test होता है interview में, so all in all उनको जो चाहिए finality में they need a, a you know a very dedicated person for this post. So ऐसा नहीं है कि जिनका fifty है तो they are thinking कि already sixty वालों को पहले select करेंगे and the vacancies are already there. So it's nothing like that. They might prefer at some point, but yes, if you have something better to offer, then you'll obviously their first preference. So, yeah, like if you perform really well in those two yes. papers, then obviously your yeah. you know selection criteria, जो आपकी select होने के chances हैं, वो ज़्यादा हो जाएंगे. Perform well in the exam, guys. That's the most important thing, obviously. Any other question, Anu? Right. Uh, so, uh, do we have any other question from the participant? Uh, please raise your hand if you have any question. Uh, we have with us uh, Vishnu Kant Rohit. Uh, please ask your question. Hi Vishnu Kant. Yeah. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. It was great session. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yeah. So could you please tell me that uh, when RBI will be declared the all the exam schedule? Um. See, like th this, I just stated this in the starting as well. So basically, see, there are a lot of speculations that the official notification is going to be out somewhere in September. But again, you know, because of COVID, we are not actually sure. Like, if you, you know, if you have an idea, yeah, about the, yeah. So if you have an idea, Sebi ki bhi kali notification aayi thi ki unka jo last date tha file karne ka form that has been extended to 31st October. So we are really not sure कब तक आएगी. Preferably by September or you know by the end of this year, but we cannot give you a you know an official confirmation कि इतने दिन में आएगी. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of that, I will ask that question. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another question, and this question is asked by Jagan Nath, and he is asking that whether the LLM will be helpful for RBI law officer. Shiva, would you like to answer this? I think uh, if you have any any significant point, then you can take up and then I'll, I'll add to it. Okay. So yeah. So see, like, जैसे कि यहाँ पर if you look at the eligibility requirements, तो वहाँ पर ये चीज़ specifically mentioned की गई है कि अगर आप LLM किए हो, तो you get a relaxation by three years. So अगर you know if you if you are actually thinking about doing an LLM, तो आप 35 years तक इस exam में appear कर सकते हो. Now, having said that, obviously, if you you know like, agar if you choose say business laws for your you know masters in LLM, that is definitely going to you know place you at a higher pedestal as compared to the other people who have relatively lesser knowledge uh, so far as the corporate laws are concerned. So yeah, like obviously, agar un like think like think it this way, ki guys, agar wo log LLM ko lekar itne three saal ka extra extension de rahe. so they might be looking for something you know from students who have actually done llm right and if you do llm in business laws if you do llm in corporate laws for that matter they are definitely going to help you in this exam in the law i think i think it was like fair enough <laughs> okay any other question anu and those uh, 
yeah those participants who are asking for cv grade examination eligibility and everything so we have successfully conducted a webinar uh, last weekend so uh, i guess that will get uploaded uh, sooner so just check that out also it's there on the and, it's there, it's there. On the okay it it has been uploaded on our youtube channel at loss eco please go and watch that out also uh, i'll ask my participants to rate this particular webinar and so far we have covered all the relevant questions uh, please rate this webinar from 1 to 10 and uh, jyoti and shiva uh, in the end uh, just uh, advice to the aspirants who are preparing for the examination go ahead shiva would like you to she's say more that. of a jolly person i think she'll be you know she'll be giving bombastic uh, <laughs> <laughs> just to add to whatever shiva had said initially like guys yahan par aapko jitni cheezon ki knowledge hai usse zyada important ye hai ki aap use express kaise kar pate ho so even if you have you know say a restricted idea about a particular topic all that matters is the way you actually express it in your exam right so work really well on your presentation skills work on your answer writing skills if you are not that good in those areas do try to you know spend more time in say whether it's like an writing an argumentative essay or practicing some answers and follow the guidelines you know follow those points that you need to add as was discussed by shiva so i think if you do that for you know and because you have time because the notification is not out yet so you actually have a lot of time and if you really want to clear this work on your answer writing skills because that's the most important thing that you need to clear the exam so yeah with this like that is well my said on jyoti and i would just uh, i would just say when you are doing all this whatever jyoti has said and whatever both of us have said in this webinar have fun doing it that's yeah. it. i would just advise that that because nothing is the end of the world because um, many times like uh, when i do something i also get uh, like many times i panic and i think that no uh, it's it's ended everything is this and that it is trust me it is not like that it is it is a very important exam it is just an exam so no you know, is above you and your uh, health happiness explore keep on explore, exploring more uh, to say you know opportunities for yourself if not this then something better than this if not something better than maybe the best so you know uh, just just enjoy the entire journey take care of yourself and you know uh, learn as a person as well i think that will add to your not only to this interview this job or it will just make you a better person in life uh, whole in all yeah, and you will be happy with whatever you are doing in life uh, that's the so most important thing please don't do it like because anybody else has asked you to do this or crack exam or because this is a this is a reminder i need to do this do what you feel like and we really uh, think that when you have joined this um, webinar today you really aspire to do this so when you are aspiring be you know um, you know be inspired as well so aspirations are important but inspirations are also important equally so with that we like we'd like to wish you good good very good luck and take care of yourself i guess in this pandemic situation yeah, yeah. all the best guys so, and eid mubarak everyone yeah yes to you yeah. have eid eid mubarak <laughs> to all of you yes right uh so thank you uh, jyoti and shiva for sharing such a motivational words and the detailed comprehensive strategies uh, with our participants and uh, for your time as well for uh, like telling the keen details which generally not available on the internet uh, so thank you so much for that and thank you participants for joining our session today uh, so yeah that's uh, that's it i guess thank you so i will sign off and thank you jyoti thank and you shiva so much. Yeah thank yes. you Anu thank you guys thank you everyone